Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a short election video on the best case scenario for Republicans in the Senate in 2022. I will be doing a best case scenario for Democrats in, the Senate in 2022 um, also. So expect that coming soon as well. But this time it'll be for Republicans, best case scenario in the Senate. Anyway, before I start the video, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are 16 subscribers away from 200 subscribers. And if we hit 200, I'll make sure to do an awesome video for that special um, hitting 200. So make sure to go hit the subscribe button. You got nothing to lose. And there's a lot of great content that comes out of this channel. I work really hard. So I hopefully you guys will subscribe anyway. Without that, let's get right into the video. Safe Democrat states will still be the East Coast states, New York, Vermont, uh, the usual. I'll even include Connecticut as a safe Democrat state because I don't want to spend too much time on it. But I'm not going to include Illinois with Tammy Duckworth. You know, there is a chance that the margins could slightly narrow up. But when we are talking now about the Senate races, Alaska will even be a safe Republican state, Alabama, South Carolina, Iowa, and Ohio. Uh, Chuck Grassley has announced that he will run again in Iowa, and he's incredibly popular there. He won by 20 points back in whenever he ran, 2016. And Rob Portman is actually retiring in Ohio, I believe. Um, but Ohio is a state that has continuously trended to the right over the last, frankly, eight years. Um, and Trump won it in, 20, in 2020 by about eight points. Um, and this is a red wave year. This is a Senate race there. The Republican definitely could win it by more than 15 points. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a Republican victory there by more than 15 points. The Republicans have all the momentum in the nation at the moment with policy, with everything. And uh, if they don't take advantage of it in the 2022 midterms, then it's going to be looking very bad. But they do have a shot to pick up many, many seats in the Senate come 2022. Anyway, let's get to a likely Democrat state. The only likely Democrat state is going to be Illinois. The rest are, you know, not in that range. Likely Republican states will be Florida with with Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio could very much win Florida by a likely margin, as well as North Carolina. North Carolina could also be won by a likely margin. Richard Burr has announced that he is retiring. Um, as senator, I mean, he did vote to remove Donald Trump or whatever you want to call him, convict Donald Trump uh, during the impeachment trial for the second round. Um, and, you know, after that, I guess, proceed, succeeding that, he has decided to not continue the Senate. I guess he assumed that he, frankly, wouldn't win his primary anymore um, and that uh, it was not worth running again. Um, so, yeah, I think that whoever, whoever, who, excuse me, whoever the Republican nominee in North Carolina is, um, they will probably end up winning if in the best case scenario for Republicans, which is what they are in right now. Joe Biden is record low on disapproval. Uh, excuse me, record high disapproval um, and record low approval numbers across the nation. So yeah, this is the moment for the Republicans to seize, as we have just saw from the off-year election in Virginia and New Jersey. Republicans uh, have gained in significant popularity among the American people. And then the final likely state would be New Hampshire. Uh, Chris Sununu, also a very popular governor of New Hampshire, he ended up winning in 2020 the governor race by, I believe, more than 20 points. So he is definitely in shape to beat Maggie Hassan. Maggie Hassan, one of the... the out of both Democrat senators, the more unpopular senator, she only won in 2016 by 0.3% against the Republican candidate. I forgot her name, but I know that she ran against someone. Uh, I know it was a female, but I forgot the person's name. She is less popular. She probably won't win against Chris Nuno if he does decide to run, which I do believe he has plans, is planning to do so. Um, and I do think that uh, Chris Nuno could win that state by a likely margin. And as I talked about in Florida, Rubio won in 2016 by 7.7%. Very much could win again, especially with Florida trending slightly more to the Republicans and increased support among Hispanics in the state. Uh, let's go to lean Democrat states. Um, actually, first, I'm going to start off with lean Republican states. I see Wisconsin being a lean Republican state. I think that Ron Johnson, if he decides to run, will win the state of Wisconsin by a lean margin, probably three to four points. This is a red wave year. Republicans are at the peak. That'll give him 50 Senate seats. Uh, and, and, and Ron Johnson is in good shape to win. People say that he's unpopular in Wisconsin. That is not true. Ron Johnson is actually a pretty popular senator. And, you know, when you look at those approval ratings, do not take those approval ratings for granted. Those approval ratings, when you look at those specific approvals per senator, per governor in the state, that is that is just not how the elections play out. So I don't even consider those. I consider the historical precedents, how he did before, and uh, the current state of the nation. And, you know, Wisconsin continues to trend to the Republicans and Ron Johnson you know, did win Wisconsin, not by the biggest of margins back in 2016, but but uh, somewhat of a margin. Uh, and now we hear here in a red wave year, I think he could win it again. Another lean Republican state I see would be Georgia. 
I think that uh, Herschel Walker could defeat Raphael Warnock by a lean margin in the best case scenario for Republicans. Uh, I think that the two Georgia races that flipped back in 2020, excuse me, not 2020, 2021, actually, because it was January 5th, obviously, right before all all the crazy stuff happened, um, back in January 5th, uh, when Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff won those races, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that that's a clear representation of what of the Georgia actual, what Georgia actually looks like. I think a lot of that was off of Trump and, you know, they just, those uh, uh, Purdue and Lawler didn't really do well because of Trump. And they were also seen as establishment Republicans. And with the Trump rhetoric against the election, I don't think the turnout was as high in Georgia. I definitely think that Republicans could flip that state back. Herschel Walker's a pretty decent candidate. I think he can resonate well with the black communities uh, and even suburban communities in Georgia uh, and has a pretty good chance of taking that state back. Obviously we have not seen any polls out of the state of Georgia so there really isn't much that I can conclude from the race, um, but yet again, it the trends and um, popularity and um, the current uh, popularity of the Democrat Party are key components in determining that. Anyway, uh, let's do a lean Democrat state. Colorado will be a lean Democrat state. Um, I think that, um, well, it's not actually Cory Gardner and John Hickenlooper. I'm not entirely sure. I'm actually the person, I think it's Michael Bennett. Um, if I can remember the person correctly, Colorado senators, um, I'm not, you know, that focused on the Colorado Senate elections, uh, this election, uh, probably last year, I was definitely more focused on it, uh, because of the fact that it was, uh, probably going to flip as a seat. Yeah. It's Michael Bennett since 29, but yeah. And <clears throat> back in 2020, when Cory Gardner was up for re-election against John Hickenlooper, I did, I guess, pay more attention to that. I think that Michael Bennett will still win by a lean margin. However, Colorado will slightly narrow up in 2022. Uh, No longer a toss-up state, more of a lean likely state, actually more of a likely state for Democrats. Um, So yeah, definitely. I don't think Republicans have that in reach at the moment, but uh, other states, they do. Another lean Republican state I see is being Arizona. I don't think that Mark Kelly is set in stone in popularity in Arizona. I definitely think that somebody in the Republican primary, as I spoke about in my previous election special, Blake Masters, would be a great candidate for the Republicans. Whether or not they nominate him is a different question, but would be a great candidate for the Republicans. Uh, And I do think that he has a very good shot at winning in Arizona. The other two, I believe in first and second, more of establishment Republicans. They also have a good chance. Um, I don't think that Mark Kelly... I think DeMar Kelly could win the race, but in this year, anything's possible. We've seen what happened with Terry McAuliffe in Virginia just you know a few days ago. Um, Mark Kelly definitely could lose, and Arizona is a much, much closer state in regards to uh, margins than Virginia has been. So yeah, take that into account. And then tilt states, I will give Pennsylvania and Nevada both to the Republicans as tilt states. Um, I think that whoever the nominees there definitely have a shot at winning. We've seen Republicans win in Nevada with Dean Heller. Uh, with, I believe, Catherine Cortez Masto running this election. Uh, Republicans definitely have a shot at taking that. I think it'll be slightly closer, but with increased Hispanic support for Republicans, Nevada will be harder for Republicans to win. And when you when, when you look at um, the um, significant uh, amounts of money that Republicans have been pouring into that, to that race and the amount of money that has been raised in the Nevada Senate race, uh, it does beg the question that Republicans think that they have a serious shot at winning that. Um, and we have seen the Republicans gain voters in that state significantly, mostly Hispanics um, in Nevada, and I do think that they have a good shot at it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how much they raised. I think it was about $100 million, but, you know, please don't. It's actually not $100 million. I'm sorry. It's millions of dollars. Um, yeah, it's a GOP. The GOP packs in Nevada definitely have a shot there. So yeah, with increased changing in party registration, Republicans could tilt that state back. Pennsylvania, another state, it depends on whether who's running in that race. It's going to be interesting. I don't think Lou Barletta has the best shot, frankly, winning that race. I think Republicans would need to nominate somebody else, but also it depends on who the Democrats nominate. If they they nominate somebody like Tom Wolf, they have a good shot at it. And it actually would still be more of a a tilt state, um, even though it's a red wave here. Anyway, let's characterize. You can take a look at all of them. Uh, in their true glory, uh, 54, 46. This is the best case scenario for Republicans in 2022. Anyway, if you guys like this video, make sure to like the 
hit the like button below, comment if you agree or disagree with my state calls, and I will do my best to respond to you, and obviously make sure to subscribe to the channel, and let's get it, let's get us to 200. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.